Okay, so let's check out this wildlife scene. When I show this to people, uh, many times I say, you know, like, okay, what do you guys see? And basically they're like, well, I see a dead thing, or I see bones. And I'm like, okay, well, look a little bit closer. Tell me something specific that you see. Well, they're going to point out that there is a lower jaw here, and that's, that's good. They're going to point out the obvious skull over here. They're going to point out some really big leg bones, possibly this broken pelvis bone, some cervic, cervical bones, which is you know, part of the spinal cord. These are the ribs. And I'll say, well, what else do you see besides the bones? Well, they start to see the acorn cap. Uh, they see the walnut hull and the acorn. They see the piece of fox tail, some bark. They all of a sudden realize that they're looking at the, the locust shell. Uh, they say, well, it looks like we see some extra teeth here. There's some, there's some canine teeth and some pine cones. Um, anything else? Occasionally, some people pick out the penny. And then usually at the end, someone will pick out, like, wait a minute, what's that shiny thing laying there? Well, that's a 22 shell. And that particular shell is a spent shell. And you can tell because it's got the little indentation on the rim and it's got no bullet or powder in there. That's good. That's kind of some good evidence. That's kind of what we're looking for here. Anything else? And then occasionally somebody will be like, well, I don't know what that is. Well, that is the 22 bullet that came from the 22 shell. It's made of lead, which is a soft metal, and it's mushroomed. And so those are the kinds of things that I want people to be looking for other than it's just a dead thing. And so those are the kinds of powers of observation, things that we want people to look for now. I've been to a lot of different wildlife scenes and some wildlife crime scenes, and I've never seen them happen on a white piece of paper. So imagine if you weren't able to see them on this white piece of paper, how much harder it would be to see if, if, they were, if it was in the woods or in the leaf litter or the grass. So the other thing that I will do is I will talk to them you know, about the animal. Like, so, so what animal is it? It's a very common one. It's found everywhere in Pennsylvania. And I'll get lots of guesses like possum, raccoon, rabbit. And then I'll be like, really? I'm like, let's take a look at this skull and see what we can determine by looking at the skull. Well, he's got incisor teeth up here. He's got canines. He's got pretty sharp molars. And then the back molars are slightly flattened. So if you know anything about dentition, you'll know that that's from an omnivore. So a, a carnivore would have pointed molars all the way to the back. A herbivore would not have canines. So this guy is an omnivore. And he is a red fox. So one of the ways to tell is to have both fox skulls and compare them. So this is the red fox, and this is the gray fox. And one of the ways we tell is by knowing a little bit about the skull formation and an, an easy way to determine the difference is to know about their genus. So a red fox, the genus is Vulpes, and that's in the shape of a V. And a gray fox is Eurocyan in the shape of a U. So once you learn that, you have an idea what the fox skull looks like. If you find one with this shape on the top and a V, that's a red, and this shape on the top is a gray. So even though this isn't a game of clue, you can determine things by looking at a wildlife crime scene, using your powers of observation, and not saying, hey, that's just a dead thing or some bones.